In a country where police kill more than 1,000 people each year and people need to protest all across the country just to get a couple of those officers charged once in a blue moon, how does this 15-year-old black child end up sentenced to 65 years in prison for a murder the police commit? The answer? Well, it might surprise you. Felony murder is one of the most unjust tools in the criminal system, and I have hated it with a passion since the day they taught me about it in law school. When you think about how the criminal system expands its powers to fill the prison industrial complex, you should think of felony murder. So what is felony murder? Felony murder allows someone to be criminally held responsible for murder if someone dies while they're committing a felony. Even if they did not intend to kill anyone, even if they didn't kill anyone, even if the police killed someone, which is what happened to Lakeith Smith. In 2015, when Lakeith was 15 years old, he and a group of four other friends broke into an unoccupied home. A neighbor saw this and called the police. And when the police arrived, they claimed that two of the boys in the group fired at the officers. So they responded by shooting and killing one of the boys, 16-year-old Adante Washington. 15-year-old Lakeith did not shoot at the police and wasn't armed with a weapon. Lakeith's only crime was breaking into the unoccupied home. But because burglary is a felony and felony murder allows the state to hold you responsible for any death that occurs during the commission of a felony, the state charged these teenage boys for the death of Adante Washington, who not only did the police kill, but had he lived, they would have been prosecuting Adante, as well as the fact that had Adante committed the burglary alone and been killed by police and there were no co-defendants to charge with felony murder, it's unlikely the police would have ever been charged. And what happened to Lakeith is not an anomaly. This is how felony murder is regularly used. Felony murder is disproportionately used against black and Latino boys and men, mostly Latino actually, and is rarely used against white men and boys because felony murder is built on the idea that white men are individuals, but black and Latino boys and men are groups where all are guilty for the actions of one. The felony murder rule is indifferent to individual culpability, whether an individual is actually responsible for the murder, as well as it allows prosecutors to circumvent their responsibility for proving an individual's culpability and each element of the crime. This group liability is what led to the Scottsboro Boys and the Central Park Five, now the Exonerated Five. If you don't know who they are, the Scottsboro Boys were a group of nine teenage black boys who were falsely accused of raping two white women on a train near Scottsboro, Alabama in 1931. And the Central Park Five were five black boys falsely accused of raping a woman in Central Park in 1989. Central Park Five have since been exonerated and had their stories translated to TV. Ava DuVernay's When They See Us, Youssef Salam was recently elected to the New York City Council, and all five men recently spoke out against Donald Trump, who previously ran ads in the paper calling for their lives at this year's DNC. But speaking of the need to protect yourself, Today's sponsor is Aura. If you haven't already been taking precautions with your personal information online before, today is the day to start because you've never been more vulnerable than you are right now. Hackers have stolen over 2.9 billion records from national public data, which offers personal information to employers, private investigators, staffing agencies, and others doing background checks. These stolen records include a person's full name, address, date of birth, social security number, and phone number, along with alternate names and birth dates, and members of the hacker group have reportedly released this information for free online. I would be a lot more afraid that the hackers would get me if I didn't use Aura. Aura alerts me if they find my phone number, email, or social security number on the dark web. They're gonna let me know fast if anyone tries to use this information to access my credit or bank accounts. They give me up to $5 million in identity theft insurance should the worst case scenario happen. They also provide a bunch of other features to keep you safe online all inside one app. You do not have to live like this and be vulnerable to hackers. Instead, you can go to my link, aura.com slash Illuminati to try 14 days free. That's all the time Aura needs to find out if your personal data is exposed. I highly recommend you do that now because not only is national public data not going to do anything to help you, they probably won't even suffer any consequences for the leak in the first place. Ain't that some mess. Thank you, Aura. While this is a regular occurrence for black and Latino boys and men, 
I'm referring to being rounded up by the system and held disproportionately responsible for murders they didn't commit. I emphasize again that this is not true for their white counterparts. In a national empirical study on racial bias, accomplice liability and the felony murder rule in the Denver Law Review, they provided a stunning comparison to illustrate the way the felony murder is used to individualize white boys and men, but de-individualize their colored counterparts. The example they provide is in 2016, the US attorney for the Southern District of New York used felony murder to charge 120 people, mostly black and Latino young men in their late teens and early 20s, for the deaths of eight people, even though a significant amount of the young men had absolutely nothing to do with the deaths. They then compared that to the January 6th insurrection that resulted in the deaths of seven people, yet none of the 1,171 people charged for their participation in the insurrection were charged with felony murder or as accomplices, none all charged as individuals. There is an ease in which the state is willing to throw away the lives of black and Latino boys and men in mass, but could not fathom to do the same to white men. You know who was also a victim of the felony murder rule? It's crazy how few people know the real reason Tay-K did the race. A 16 year old Tay-K shot to fame in 2017 when he dropped the song, The Race, a banger, on the day he was captured by authorities. <laughs> If you know about Tay-K, you know this iconic feels like the wrong word. So I guess infamous, notorious photo of Tay-K holding his own wanted photo. Tay-K was captured by a US Marshal after three months on the run after cutting off his ankle monitor while out on bail for the crime he would eventually be sentenced to 55 years in prison for. When the race first went viral, Tay-K became a primary example for people to point to of authentic rappers who really live their rhymes and are dangerous gangsters and all this other stuff that was only exacerbated by rumors he allegedly murdered another person while doing the race, a charge he's currently awaiting trial on. But the truth isn't quite that. Although Tay-K is awaiting trial on that rumored case, Tay-K doing the race and being sentenced to 55 years in prison had less to do with him being really about that life or an exceptionally dangerous person and more to do with him being a 16 year old who was scared to death of spending the rest of his life in prison for a murder he didn't commit because prosecutors wanted to use felony murder's accomplice liability to hold him responsible. So. Let's talk about the case that made Tay-K do the race. In 2016, Megan Holt and Ariana Barat came up with a plan to rob a 17 year old white boy they were friends with and they called Tay-K and a couple of other black teenage boys to help them carry out the robbery. The girls let Tay-K and the others into the house and they robbed the young men. But as they were leaving, there was a confrontation that led to one of the other participants shooting and killing Ethan Walker. Tay-K did not shoot Ethan. He was actually in the home searching for money and drugs at the time Ethan was shot and he was a juvenile. Yet, as is often the case for black boys, he was tried as an adult. And despite not being the one who killed the young man, he was found guilty and sentenced to 55 years in prison. Meanwhile, what happened to the girls whose plan this actually was? Who set all these events in motion? They did not try the girls as adults. They let them plead to the much lesser charges of aggravated robbery and allowed them to testify against the black boys they brought into this plan in exchange for a 20 year sentence. No accomplice liability for them. They get to be individuals. They get to be children. While Tay-K and other black boys are responsible for the crimes of the whole, which is a fact Tay-K himself has reflected on, tweeting from his jail cell last year. I really just need one chance at adulthood. I bet if I was a little white kid, they wouldn't have given me no 55 years for a crime I was alleged to play the most insignificant role in when I was 16. They would have rightfully argued that my mind wasn't fully developed and gave me rehabilitation and a second, first chance at adulthood. One of my co-defendants was a white girl who was 16 just like me. They didn't certify her as an adult, but they certified me and Pimp as adults. Pimp got 30, I got 55. She ended up getting 10 years of probation without no deal. That girl at home right now. Not sure if y'all know, I got sentenced as an adult to 55 years in prison for a crime where I wasn't even the shooter. I wasn't even alleged to have a gun. I was never even suspected to have pulled the trigger or hurt anyone. I was young and I didn't have no positive figures around. I'm sitting here thinking about all my fans. I love and miss y'all. I know there's a lot that I haven't directly spoken on and there are many things my fans know, but I'm not sure everybody else does. I've been here for five and a half years now and I feel indebted to y'all for going so crazy behind me. It's still crazy to me that I never had a chance to live outside as an adult. I've been locked up and in and out of the justice and CPS system for my whole life. I love my fans and I don't want anyone to think I'm promoting or really recommending violence, he said. That's why I really dedicated a lot of my time in here to using the success of my music to have a positive impact on other young artists, even if it's something small like taking a phone call or writing a letter to keep them positively inspired. 
regardless of my situation. The movement is eternal. Understand, I'm not highlighting the differences between how the criminal system treats white boys and men versus how it treats black and Latino boys and men because I want white people to also be rounded up and unfairly railroaded by the criminal system. I'm pointing it out to you because I want the system to level down, not up. I would like the system to lend the same mercy to black and brown people, but I needed to show y'all exactly how and why the system doesn't do that.